Yeah, I want to talk about, uh, just to kind of look back on the festival and also, I guess, share some of our um, perspectives on revolutionary organizing today. So to begin with, I want to express that I think we had an amazing weekend with lots of really cool speakers. And I want to like express thanks to everyone who co-organized this festival, everyone who was kind of chairing meetings, who was standing at the door, who was selling tickets, the people who cooked the food, um, everyone that helped with filming and all of these things. So let's give them a round of applause, please. <laughs> I also think that for us it's important to emphasize that this festival is not a one-directional di experience where like we as international socialists tell our contacts or comrades like what's up but this is like a two-way street right so all of you have come here who participated you shared your knowledge your experience and your perspectives with us and that also deserves some applause so thanks <laughs> I think we had so many amazing meetings this 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 week by or this weekend by a lot of cool comrades. Um, I've heard so much positive feedback about meetings, um, for example, about Ukraine, about the struggle against the far right, about climate change. But we also got new perspectives, for example, on the need to talk about capitalism and neurodivergency more, um, and give comrades and contacts uh, opportunities to talk and share their experiences. And I think that's also why Marxism Festival is really important, that we can share amongst each other and organize, like we can share today and organize tomorrow, right? So that's, that was really successful for us, I think. I think the period that we're experiencing at the moment uh, is one full of contradictions. Uh, we see that the working class uh, still continue to be um, uh, like suffering under the consequences of austerity, of an ever forward pushing long uh, crisis of the economic system, um, that people struggle to find affordable housing or housing at all, to be honest, that racism and the far right are ever more present and being normalized in ever new and disgusting ways, um, and that there's a real possibility of a devastating war between imperialist blocs that could you know, wipe out humanity, but at the same time that there's also still um, immense threat uh, to the environmental system into our planet and the destruction of it. Um, so unfortunately, we also have to struggle against yet another Rutte cabinet that kind of stumbles from scandal to scandal, um, but still positions itself as you know, there being no alternative to it. Um, I think the last period um, that we've lived through or that we're still living through that of like the coronavirus um, made organizing both the festival in the last couple of years, but also organizing in general like a real struggle. Um, and it was very difficult, I think, to maintain movements from below because we had to find very new ways of, of being active and of organizing and of networking. Many mov movements took serious blows during this um, period, and many parties and organizations have struggled to keep their head over water. But I think that's why it's ever more important to now come together at moments like Marxism Festival with many comrades from many different movements um, uh, and share experiences, be it the housing struggle, the climate struggle, the struggle for the liberation of Palestine, but also having uh, comrades of other political organizations and groups active here, um, present here, like for example, of Bayern, of uh, the Democratic Socialists, of Roth and of others. Um, and I think it's, yeah, it's really important that we have so many diverse speakers um, on so many different topics. Um, also, for example, on the, the climate, climate march on the 19th in Rotterdam, and it's crucial that as revolutionaries, we join these movements openly and visibly to share our revolutionary perspectives of saving the planet that go beyond just kind of, you know, consumer boycotts or like buying an electronic car um, uh, or hoping for the next billionaire to kind of come up with some, some great solution to save us. Um, you know, we have to realize that, the, that these institutions in the states are not there to represent us, um, but that they're there to pacify us and we have to struggle against them uh, because every advance that we make in the, in the struggle for, for the climate is a struggle that um, the working class has to fight for and has to kind of, you know, force into, into, into place. Um, I think the reality today at large is that a, lo a lot of comrades feel often unmotivated and frustrated if we look at all of these kind of things because it feels like we have a lot to lose if we're not successful um, in this period of struggle um, ahead of us lies an age of wars, of climate destruction um, that will hit a lot of us, but in particular the people in the global south, an age of pandemics, and a kind of like rolling back of the gains that the working class has fought for for decades. But I think, I'm not saying this to like, you know, point out all of the bad, but there's also things that motivate us in this. Um, and I think because we're Marxists, we know that 
Even when we're faced with this kind of barbarism of bourgeois society, socialism will always be an alternative that's worth fighting for. We don't just have a lot to lose, we have, a lot, we have ever more to win. As working class revolutionaries, we can participate in building a world that we've never seen before, that's characterized by solidarity, by shared and democratic management of our workplaces, our universities, and our everyday lives. A world that doesn't know hunger or war. But we cannot fight for this world alone. <laughs> Our conceptualization of change is one of a struggle for revolutionary socialism from below, a struggle that is based in working class activity and the self-emancipation of the working class. That struggle doesn't happen in the heads of individuals. It doesn't happen in our organization alone. It doesn't happen in just the union struggle or just the climate struggle, but it comes from militant mass action of our entire class collectively. Um, as an individual, you can only do so much, but if you're organized, you can like pull in one direction, you can win things together. I think this is why it's so important that we come together collectively and discuss our struggle against the system at large, and we discuss kind of what movements we need to support and how to support them, but that we also share our experiences amongst each other as marginalized people and as working class people at large to draw collective lessons, because I think when we bring our experiences together and discuss them collectively, that's when we can find out how to build consciousness in our class and how to build movements that can win, that can struggle and that can win. Um, of course, after discussing, we need to get organized and we need to like, coordinate these lessons um, and we need to put them into action in the streets. And that's why I think if you're not a member yet, <laughs> You should, see, uh, but if you want to join the struggle and if you want to educate yourself and your comrades on Marxism, you should consider joining an organization, because we need your numbers and we need your experiences and your perspectives. In exchange, we can offer an organization that is rooted in a tradition of a full century of struggle, with with countless lessons that can show you how to root your perspectives and experiences firmly in Marxism and revolutionary theory and make a real historical possibility, make the real historical possibility of working class socialism from below finally a reality. We have a world to win. Thanks.